Hello everyone, welcome to Torah Talk on Parshas Mezos HaBracha and Simchas Torah. I'm here in my mobile recording studio, so sorry if the audio or the quality isn't as good as it usually is. So we're going to talk about Mezos HaBracha and Simchas Torah, which are really inseparable because Mezos HaBracha is read on Simchas Torah in a very special tune that it's read in the Torah and it's during all the rejoicing and dancing of Simchas Torah. So the Parsha itself really is mostly one thing, and that is Moshe's blessing to the Jewish people. And uh, Moshe follows in the tradition that Yaakov Avinu did before he passed on. He gathered his children and he blessed them. And Moshe also gives beautiful, beautiful blessings to all the Jewish people. And then Moshe dies. And there's, you know, there's discussion here. Moshe, for example, the Torah says that Moshe died, but Moshe wrote the Torah, right? By the word of Hashem, by the hand of Moshe. Moshe wrote the Torah. So who wrote that Moshe died? How could somebody possibly write that they died? That wouldn't be true. There's discussion about it. Did Moshe write, write that? Did Yahushua write that? But I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of the Parsha, even though there's a lot of a lot of gems there, a lot of gems in the Parsha. But because this is the completion of the Torah, I want to focus more in this, uh, in this edition on Simchas Torah. So Simchas Torah is a time that we celebrate. We dance, we rejoice, we celebrate the Torah learning that we did the whole year. And of course, you know, that's led by the completion of the Torah, which is read in shul every single week. And it comes the end of the year and we, we've read publicly every single parsha. But of course, in a broader sense as well, we're celebrating our Torah learning. We're celebrating all the Torah learning that we did this past year, whether it was from the Chumash or other Svarim or Talmud or you know, Navi or anything that possibly talks to us, anything that we learn throughout the year, we are celebrating now, we are dancing, we're rejoicing, we're we're excited, we're appreciative, and we're also committing to the year to come. This is like a time that we celebrate what we've done, and we're excited and optimistic and look forward to the Torah learning that we're going to do next year as well. You know, for this platform, Torah Talk, this is a big celebration that we have this Simchas Torah, for those who have been uh, tuning into Torah Talk, you know, weekly or once in a while, we're completing a full year of giving these classes every single week, learning the Parsha together. We did the entire Torah. There was not one Parsha that was missed. And I think that's definitely a cause for celebration. So, you know, have in mind whether you learned that or you learned any other type of, of Torah learning, this is the time that we are going to be celebrating that. So, Sukkot has a special mitzvah. Pesach has a special mitzvah. Sukkot has the Dalad Minim. We shake the Dalad Minim. Sukkot has the sukkah that we eat in. And Pesach has the matzah. And Pesach, they're, they're, every, there's four cups of wine. And we refrain from eating chametz. And every Yom Tif has mitzvahs. They have tools. Mitzvahs are tools for us to connect to Hashem. So, Hashem will decide, you know, what the theme of the Yom Tif is and will create for us the mitzvahs that will bring us close to Him. And we have that pretty much by every Yom Tif. A Yom Tif that we do not have that by is Shemini Atzeres in Simchas Torah. There is no unique mitzvah that we specifically do on Shemini Atzeres in Simchas Torah. The minhag, the custom to dance in shul is not a mitzvah in the Torah that you should dance and do the hakafos and, and whatever. That's a that's a well, well, well accepted, unbelievable mitzvah, which brings us to the, the spirit of the day and the purpose of the day. But the Torah didn't tell us to do that. The Torah didn't tell us any specific mitzvah to do on Shemini Atzeris. And it's interesting that that's the case. And I saw that the reason for that is because we don't need tools to connect to Hashem on this Yom Tif. After the entire month of Elul, and we've had Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and then the, the days leading up to Sukkot, and we have Sukkot, and we have Chalamayid, and we have Hashanah Rabbah, and now we're, we're at such a close place, so connected to Hashem, that we're ready to just rejoice with Hashem. And we don't need special mitzvahs to make us be able to do that. So it's a very unique day. It's a very holy day. It's a very holy level. You might think that if there's no special mitzvahs, it's less special. It's actually more special. Because there's no mitzvahs, that means 
that we're just one with Hashem. We don't need the tools, we don't need the mitzvahs, we're just one with Hashem. I want to read for you an idea that was mind-blowing to me and so empowering, such an amazing lesson. So um, I want to read a bit from the Sefer Biyam Dar Kecha, which I have over here in my mobile recording studio. And he talks about this, written by Rebbe Meyer Morgenstern, and he talks about the, the holiness and the specialness of Simcha's Torah. So he starts, I'm not going to get into all the details of like his introduction to this, but basically he talks about how in a, in a level of deep holiness and connection to Hashem, Simcha's Torah is like the peak of, of holiness. Simcha's Torah is the, the climax of the whole month like I was saying before, leading up to Elul and Roshanim Kippur and Sukkot, and now we finally reached this space of Simchas Torah, and this is like the highest level of connection to Hashem. And he talks about how it's represented by Keser. We give a, a crown to Hashem, and there's a lot of deep and Kabbalistic ideas that he talks about with regards to that. And he talks about this like supremely holy level that we could be at. And he talks about in certain kavanah, certain intentions and thoughts that we could have on Simchas Torah. He talks about how throughout the entire Sukkot we have Hashanahs, and we circle around the bima, and we say some Hashanahs, and each one of those represents something very deep and very powerful. And then Simchas Torah, they all gather together, and we go around the bima seven times. We have seven hakafas, and he talks about every single Hakafa, it goes through each one, what intent we could be having and what unbelievable levels of Kedusha we could be acquiring during Hakafas. The first one is the the Mida of Chesed, and the second one is Gvura, and then Tefaris and Natsach and Haid, and he goes through one one after another. And I was reading this, and it's it's really holy stuff, right? But I also feel a, a little disconnected from that because the reality is that when I come to Simchas Torah, maybe you could relate to this, I don't necessarily feel this unbelievable unearthly level of connection to Hashem. I don't have these kavanas. I don't even know what they mean. I, I read the words here and I don't even know what they mean. So, like, it, so how can I get to this? How can you get to this? How can we get to this? When I read this, I didn't see it as encouraging. I, I saw it as like a little depressing almost. Like, wow, look at all these amazing levels of connection to Hashem that I'm not going to get to. But then he continues on, and, and this is unbelievable what he says. So he says, on the day of Simchas Torah, we find many hastaros ubilbulim, which means we find things that are hidden. We find that things are hidden. And, we, and there's confusions, and there's distractions, both in terms of the protocol of the day, the, the rituals that we do, the, the way tefillah is structured, and the dancing is structured, and musaf, and a kiddush, and like the way we do things, and also internally, like in our minds, internally, there are things as well that are distracting for us. So, he says, this is, this is not for no reason. Okay, let, let me just clarify a little bit what he might mean by that. So, there's a lot of parts of Simchas Torah that you might not find conducive to achieving this, like, unbelievable level of holiness that I, that I was talking about before, that he was writing about before. There's distractions that come up. Not necessarily is the way we're celebrating Simchas Torah, the shul, the people around us, like I said, even the Kiddush, like there's all kinds of things that go into what, what we focus on and how connected we're feeling. And the smallest thing could be a distraction to us. The smallest thing. You don't like the way the person next to you dances. You don't like the way this is set up. You don't like the way that is set up. Or even if everything seems to be set up perfectly, and you're the perfect environment, okay? Whatever that might be for you, okay? For me, I I love like big crowds. It might be being in a show with 5,000 other people. I'm, that might be like perfect for me. Like crazy energy and fire and just like unbelievable dancing. Even if I have all that, that doesn't mean I'm going to be connected. 
I might just feel annoyed and claustrophobic and too hot and not in the mood. Like there's so many ways to get easily distracted. So you're going to come and tell me there's this unbelievable level of holiness on some class Torah and I'm going to tell you, well, tell me how to get to that. I, I can't get to that. Even if everything's set up perfectly, I'm not necessarily going to get to that. So he says the fact that there are distractions and confusions, and again, both externally, there are things around us, people, places, things around us in some class Torah that might be distracting to try to like reach this connection to Hashem. And also internally, our minds get distracted. You know, they easily wander off and we lose interest and we're this. And so he says it's not for no reason. He says you should know that these confusions, he calls them bilbulim, like confusion. So we use that word. These confusion, uh, uh, distractions, let's say distractions, were created for a reason. What is that reason? He says it is so that a person doesn't feel that I got it. I got this level of connection to Hashem. I already know Hashem. Rather, he should recognize that he's far from the ideal levels of connecting to Hashem. And through that, he will connect to Hashem, maybe with a little bit of, of sadness that he's not at, at his most ideal level, but he will appreciate whatever level he does have. Because if a person thinks that he got it, if a person thinks, yes, I'm, I've got this Simchas Torah, I'm on a high level, I'm connecting, this is just Devekus and connection to Hashem. So then, any little distraction is going to make him fall completely. Any little thing goes wrong in Simchas Torah, and again, either externally, something around us, or internally, our minds just go somewhere else and we're just not feeling it, we're not feeling the light, we're not feeling the fire, we're not feeling inspired and passionate one one little thing can take that away if we, if we think that we have this high level one distraction could could collapse the whole thing but if a person understands that he's not at the ideal level then he's happy with what he has simcha's torah is there to make him be happy with what he has and on a deeper level all of these confusions and distractions are created for a person to internalize a real fire of connection to Hashem that it, that is thorough, that is through and through, that is not external. It's not like an external, you know, light that's just like comes and goes. He feels inspired, he turns around and the inspiration's gone and that's it. It's something real and permanent that he's acquired in himself. I'm going to read a little more and, and we'll talk about this. Because specifically through the difficulty, a person, the, through the distractions, through the confusions, a person can get to an internal point of truth and a humbleness in, in where he's at in serving Hashem, and that will stay with him forever. And this answers a question that people might ask themselves in Simchas Torah. How can I dance with the Torah? What do I know about the Torah? What do I know about the Torah? How much of the Torah do I actually know? Every single person is far from acquiring the entire Torah. No matter where you are on the spectrum, can you really say this is yours? This safer Torah? Can you really say you know the Torah? You've analyzed the Torah? You live your life completely in accordance with the Torah? What makes me worthy of dancing with the Torah? Maybe that should be for the greatest people of generation who could really say that they live the Torah. And the answer is, says the Biyam Darkecha, the answer is that Hashem loves me anyway. And Hashem is happy in what I'm doing anyway. And I am connecting to Hashem. A person will ask himself another question. Wait, I'm connecting to Hashem? Am I really connecting to Hashem? Can I really say with a straight face that I am connecting to Hashem the way I should be doing? And the answer is, Hashem is with you always, in every situation. In every situation, Hashem is with you. We're connecting to Hashem, and Hashem is connecting to us. And with this, a person will reach an internal, simple emunah, just a simple level of, of knowing Hashem, and that causes the greatest joy in the world. And then he'll rejoice in Hashem without any connection 
to success and to light. What does that mean, success and light? Success means that my dancing with the Torah is going to be dependent on accomplishment that I've had this year. I'm going to dance with the Torah because I learned this amount of Torah this year. This is, you know, I was even saying in the beginning, let's celebrate the Torah we learned this year. But the Simcha on Simcha's Torah is not connected to the success of Torah that we've gotten. It is there even if we don't have successes in Torah. And it is not connected to iris. What is iris? Light. What does it mean, light? Light means the, the times that you feel your Judaism. You're, you're excited and you're passionate about your Judaism. That's what he refers to as R, as light. So if Simcha's Torah was dependent on us feeling inspired and on fire about our Judaism, again, that could bring to like these questions. Wait, but am I, who am I to actually do that? Do I, can I really say I've been a, an inspired Jew this year? So he says it's not about that. It's not about that. But on the contrary, there are distractions on Simcha's Torah because only with distractions can we really rejoice with the Torah. It's not about perfection. It's not about, I am dancing with the Torah because I had a good year of Torah learning. I am dancing with the Torah because I was a passionate Jew this year. It's, it's regardless of that. It's, it's way broader than that. We dance with the Torah because we are excited about our connection to Hashem, regardless of where that connection is holding. Regardless of, somebody else might look and say, oh, he's disconnected and she is disconnected and this person, is this. everybody has like levels that we just, you know, decide on everybody else. It doesn't matter what people think of us and it doesn't matter how we're doing. It doesn't matter. Simcha's Torah is not about celebrating success. It's about celebrating our connection to Hashem, acknowledging that Hashem loves us, Hashem is always with us, and yes, we are worthy of dancing with the Torah, and yes, we are worthy of connecting to Hashem. We have Torah and we have Dveikas. Because Simcha's Torah is about celebrating, embracing the distractions and the confusions and the imperfections. And I think I want to go a little bit broader with that. And this touches on other themes that I've read in, in this Sefer and other Sefers by the same author. And the basic idea is that there's two modes that one could be at when it comes to serving Hashem. There's the, there's the inspired mode where you're excited and you're passionate and you just love it. You love it. You enjoy connecting to Hashem. You enjoy the mitzvahs. And that's awesome. That feels awesome. It is so much easier to do mitzvahs when you love them and you're inspired by them. And there's another part of serving Hashem when you're not feeling inspired. When you're not feeling it. You're not in the mood. You have no interest. You have no patience. That isn't a time that we're not serving Hashem. That's a time that we serve Hashem just like we do when we're inspired. It's just that the actual process of doing that is, is going to come out differently. It's going to be okay, Hashem. I'm not in the ideal position right now. This is not this is not how I connect to you. I, for whatever reason. I'm not in the mood. I have too much on my mind. People around me are distracting me. I need more to inspire me. I don't have I don't have enough around me. I need to be inspired by this rabbi and this event and and this circumstance. And then you're just not you're just not feeling it. But then we serve Hashem just the same. It just feels different. It's it's a different avayda. It's a different process of how to connect to Hashem despite the distractions. But the point is that a Jew can and should always connect to Hashem, no matter where he is on planet Earth, and no matter who is with him, we can connect to Hashem. So if we're inspired and we have what inspires us, it'll be much easier to do that. And if we don't, it'll it'll be harder and our our steps might be smaller. Our goals are going to be a little bit less, you know, based on what we feel is good. But but it's not any less of a level of serving Hashem. So this is what we do the whole year. The whole year. The, we, we try to serve Hashem, whether we're feeling it or we're not feeling it. And Simchas Taira is when we celebrate that. It's when we, we go to Hashem, we say, Hashem... I love you. I want to dance with you. I want to dance with the Torah. I want to connect to you. And things are not perfect. Things are totally not perfect at all. I would love to come to Simcha's Torah and be so inspired by my connection to Hashem 
that I just stand there, right? What, what would be the most ideal expression of joy would be for you to dance the way your body tells you to, the way your neshama tells you to. You just sit there and you'd close your eyes and you'd think about Hashem and you think about connecting to Hashem and you would let that take you to wherever that would take you for however many hours that might be and whatever that might look like. But that's that's not reality. We come to shul, dancing is is planned, it's it's orchestrated, we dance around this, we dance like that. There, there's not that much room for, for flexibility generally. This is like, there's a program. And, and we're trying to connect to Hashem from a very deep place, but not necessarily will that program make us do that. Maybe, yeah, maybe no. It depends where we are and it depends what, what turns us on, what, what gets us going. So it's going to come some Chas Torah and you might want to f to be on fire. You want to be on fire. You want to connect to Hashem. You want to have real simcha in, in Torah and in Judaism and that might not happen. And and it's says the Biyam Darkecha, it's intentional that, that it's not going to happen. It's intentional that there's distractions because that would make us miss the whole boat. If Simcha's Torah was about rejoicing at the perfection of Avodah Hashem, about being besimcha and dancing to, to a feeling of unbelievable inspiration, it would be fake. It, it wouldn't be authentically representative of our Jewish life throughout the year. That's not the reality. Maybe we wish it was the reality, but it's not the reality. So instead, Simchas Torah represents the whole year because there's these unbelievable levels of Kedusha and holiness we could achieve, and it's going to be very hard to actually achieve that. There's going to be distractions. We take those distractions and we say, okay, now this is real. Now this is real. It's hard. There's things that are going to distract me and confuse me and get in my way and annoy me. Now it's real. Now this is, this is Judaism. This is what it is. Now I'm going to take that, I'm going to accept that, and I'm going to dance with that. I'm going to take any negativity I have in my life, any negativity I have in my Judaism, hold it tight, and dance with that on Simchas Torah. That's what we're doing. We're embracing the challenges of Judaism. We're embracing the, the difficulties. We're, we're taking it all, and we're dancing with that. We're dancing with the Torah with that. We're saying, yeah... I'm not perfect in Torah. I'm not perfect in connection to Hashem. But Hashem loves me. Hashem is dear. Hashem loves my avodas Hashem. He loves my expression of Judaism. And I'm just going to be happy with it. I'm going to I'm going to celebrate it. I'm going to celebrate the process. We're not celebrating the fact that we aren't on the ideal level of Judaism. Okay, don't get me wrong here. We're, we're celebrating the reality. We're celebrating the process. That's what we're dancing with. We're dancing with, I'm here with all my imperfections and all my lack of passion and my lack of Torah. And Hashem, I love you and I want to dance with you and I want to dance with the Torah. And above all, I value the Torah and I respect the Torah. And even if my life doesn't look like a perfect representation of that, I, I'm still here. I'm, I'm in the game. I'm committed to the process. That's what Simchas Torah is about. So, th this was very empowering to me. Very empowering to me. Because before I got to that, I, I was just recognizing that there's a lot of holiness on Simchas Torah that I don't know that I'm going to achieve, that I'm probably not going to get to. Now I understand. The lack of, imperf the lack of perfection is exactly what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that I'm just here with Hashem. So I hope everybody has a wonderful Yom Tov. Take this idea, whatever happens on Simchas Torah, celebrate your Yiddishkeit, celebrate your connection to Hashem, celebrate your, your perfections and your imperfections. Take it all, dance with it, let's commit to it, commit to the process. Hope everybody has a joyous and happy Yom Tov, and we will see you next week. Bezrat Hashem.